Hi, my name is Matt Klaskowski. Welcome to the latest video where we're gonna take a look at a few of my favorite little tricks for removing fringes. Uh, those little edges that are left over after selections inside your photos. We're gonna look at a sky replacement example and then we're also gonna look at a, uh, where we take a person from one photo, put them into a different background. But this is the kind of stuff I, I kind of look back through my library of material and old books that I wrote and I realized I have all these little fringe removal tricks that are scattered about. So I figured I'd take them, put them all into one place for you and that way you can have a few different ones to choose from depending on what photo you have. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in this first example, what we'll do is we'll do a sky replacement. I have a, I have an example with a person in it uh, in a little while as well, but let's do a, a quick sky replacement. I would, uh, I would normally just grab my quick selection tool. Um, I do have some videos on my, my YouTube page here that dive a little bit more into selections and whatnot. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this other than I really just paint on the sky. Okay. I usually go path of least resistance, which is the sky is a, a little bit easier here. Come up here to select and mask and uh, inside there i'm just going to go make sure i use the second tool over here okay on the left hand side the second tool it's called the refine edge brush tool and all i do is i paint over the areas that i think are problems so there's all these holes in the trees over here that we missed so i'd paint over all of that and then a little bit on the trees over here and you can see photoshop does a pretty crazy good job of, uh, of getting all those little areas inside of there. Um, from there, I'm going to click OK. It's going to leave me with a selection and that will all change and vary depending on what you have your output settings set to down here. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a selection on mine. Click OK. Um, and by the way, guys, there's a thousand different options inside that dialog box. I can't go over all of them in this video. Um, all I can say is, is, is they all have their place for certain times. So they may work and they may not work. But, um, if you wonder why I'm not using every option in there, it's because for this tutorial and this image, these are the ways that I found work best. Okay. Now I have my selection active. What I'm going to go do is go grab the sky, select all copy. Let's go pop back over into this photo and then I'll just come up here to the edit menu, go down here to paste special and I'm gonna paste into, okay? And what that's gonna do is gonna take that sky, it's gonna paste it into the selection that I had and automatically puts a layer mask and all that fun stuff there. From here I go into uh, free transform, command or control T and I will kind of bring that up a little bit, move that down a bit, so. Right about there, I think will work pretty good. And one of the biggest, one of the biggest fails in, in sky replacements that I see is that we replace it with the wrong sky. Okay. We replace it with a sky that doesn't look realistic. And so we've got a very light blue faded sky here. And I just replaced it with a very deep blue sky here. No matter what I do to defringe, it's never going to look good. All right. If I wanted to make this, if I wanted to not even have to defringe, all I would have to do is, is go to image adjustments, go down here to brightness and just pull down or pull up the brightness of that sky. And you would never see any bright fringes along the edges there. Try to retain, you know, the detail in the clouds, but I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to make it harder than it has to be just for the sake of, of showing you the worst case scenario. Okay. Whereas you had to put something dark against something where you selected where the edges were bright. And that's exactly what happened here, right? The edges are bright. I'm trying to replace that background with something dark. Hence, because the selection's not precisely perfect, what you're going to get is that little fringe there. Okay. Again, I, I would normally say, you know, pull back the opacity on the sky, brighten the sky. You would never see it, but let's go worst case scenario here. So method number one to, to get rid of this is a tool that, that you probably don't use a lot here inside of Photoshop, but can come in really handy. Um, it's, you go over here to the uh, left-hand side, it's the smudge tool, all right? And I, gosh, I covered, I, I wrote a compositing book back in 2011, and, and I remember talking about this tool, and it's still around, it still does the same exact thing, so. We go over here, it's the smudge tool. It's gonna to be grouped in with the blur tool. It might look like a little teardrop and you just have to click and hold and go down to the smudge tool. Should be right around the gradient as well. So from here, 
What we want to do is we want to make sure we click on the layer mask. We don't want to click on the actual photo. We don't want to smudge the photo. We want to smudge the layer mask. On the left hand side, I'm going to, or the top left hand side, under mode, I'm going to choose normal. Under strength, I'm going to keep this really low, five to 10%. Don't, don't go any higher than 10%. In fact, if less is more in this case. And uh, let's command or control plus to zoom in. And then what we do is, we're gonna, we have a problem, if you think of what our, our issue is, we have a problem with the layer mask. It's not covering what we need it to cover. So smudging by painting is going to smudge that mask a little bit on the edges and it's gonna smudge it inward so that it starts to help get rid of our little fringy thing. And I go over it twice sometimes, like sometimes, you know, you can see here, I'll go over the same area twice. I'd rather do that than have a strength of, that was too high and have that smudge. Here's what happens when it's too high. See, it just kills it, all right? So I'd rather keep a strength really, really low here and then just kind of go and kind of eat into those edges a little bit, all right? This works best when it's not a super crisp uh, selection. It's not a super crisp edge. And these are kind of faded. This is way off in the distance, so it's not going to ever be tack sharp. So you just kind of smudge them in there. Okay. Now I'm going to undo command or control Z a whole bunch of times. And uh, just let's get ourselves back to where we were before. All right. So that's one method. And if you want to, if you want to kind of see what's happening, you can always hold down your option key on the Mac or your alt key on the PC and click on that layer mask. And then you can kind of watch, see, see what happens when I do that. See how it's push smudging the white into the black and that's the layer mask. So, you know, just kind of smudging, remember white is what we're going to see. So that's why we're, we're seeing that. And then what you do is just option or alt click again on that layer mask to get back to where we were before. Okay. So that is one method. Method number two, is the dodge and burn tools, okay? Um, th these are tools as old as Photoshop. This is actually a happy accident. I discovered like 10 years ago trying to remove fringes thinking it really can't be as simple as just going to two super old tools, but they work great. And, um, and what you're gonna find is, is that the color and tones depend on whether or not the dodge or the burn tool is gonna work. So just kind of keep that in mind that it may come to you kind of working with both of them to see which one responds better. Okay, so we're going to go over here. We're going to go with this dodge tool here. You can experiment. I have differing luck depending on how bright and dark the photo is. I have various luck between highlights and midtones. Okay, this is a pretty bright area, so I'm going to go with the highlights option on it. And that's a that's a pretty safe bet is to to use your highlights. And then what we're going to do is again, let me zoom in so you can really get a, a feel for this edge. And we're just gonna go paint along the edge. Remember, we always have to click on this layer mask though. We're not, we're not dodging and burning the actual photo itself. We're working on the layer mask. And then we just go and we just click along the edge there. All right, I'm gonna zoom in even further. I'm gonna undo that step and let's do it one more time so you can really get a feel for this. It's in a way, it's almost chiseling away that fringe. And the more you go over it, the more you'll chisel it away, right? This works good for a harder edge, all right? Remember I always said the smudge tool works, works best, I think, for a softer edge. Could be the edge of people's clothing, a sweater, a sweatshirt, whatnot. I think this tends to work best when you need a harder edge around things, a stricter, uh, more precise edge. All right. As we get near the trees here, you're going to see, yeah, it's, it's not bad. And honestly, if I was, it wasn't zoomed into 800%, it would look just fine. But if you're going to pixel peep, or if your edge is going to be a little bit more crisp, again, let me back that off back to normal view. You would, you would never, ever see it. If I shared this on the web, you could never tell. So it actually does work really well. So that is kind of the, the dodge and burn method. Um, I don't have a photo with a dark edge here, but if, if, you, if you have something with a darker edge, then you'd switch over to the burn tool and then you could change your range. Again, anywhere from mid-tones is, if, I'll only go there if the shadows or the highlights didn't work, okay? So the formula is, is you're gonna go to the dodge tool and you're gonna usually choose highlights. And again, an exposure somewhere in that 50 to 60 range. 
And then you're gonna go down here to the burn tool if you have a dark fringe and you would choose shadows, okay? And you would do the same thing, paint along that edge there. Again, same thing on the exposure. So but if it's gonna be the, the dodge tool, you do highlights, it's gonna be the burn tool, you do shadows, okay? So that's, uh, that's two different examples there. Let's go flip over to a person on a background. And I use the same technique that I used the last time to, uh, to select them off their background. You will notice here, if I zoom in, we've got a nice fringe going along her right arm because she had a white background to begin with. Now, this is a perfect time for a commercial break for about 30 seconds for me to tell you that if you do like this kind of stuff, guys, I, uh, I actually have a Photoshop compositing course. Uh, this course is really meant for, it's kind of meant for natural light photographers, not necessarily assuming you have a studio and all the gear and lighting to make composites, uh, but more kind of just taking people uh, from one background, putting them into another background. There's a levitation composite in there. Uh, there's a few different wildlife composites. You know, one, I, I did a trip to the zoo and I showed how you can just take some simple zoo photos and drop those into different backgrounds. There's some sports collages. There's a moon composite. There is an eclipse composite and sky replacements and all that stuff in between. So if you want to check it out, the link is in the description. And uh, and as a thank you for, uh, for being a subscriber to my videos here, uh, there's actually a code in there where you can save 15% off the cost of the course as well. Okay. All right. Let's dive back into our story. So just to show you these methods that I showed you before don't just work on sky replacements. Uh, let's go over here. Let's grab the, 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 the smudge tool. Um, and I've got my same settings before. I'm going to make sure I go over here and click on the layer mask, not the actual layer thumbnail. And if I go and I zoom in, you can see I can smudge that edge in. Now, I don't think this is a really good tool for this just because this is a pretty hard edge. Okay, her skin, her arm, it's a pretty hard edge. So I'm not sure I really want to blur that quite as much. So I'll undo that. But I do think it would work. Get back here. I do think it would work really well around the clothes. All right. Again, you've got fabric. It usually tends to be a little bit softer around those edges. And I think it would work fine around there. But we're gonna take a look at one more way because there's a reason I'm giving you several because they're all gonna respond differently to different photos. So you kind of have to have a little bag of trips, a little repertoire of things that you can go through and try based on the photo. If one doesn't work, you can try the other one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here. We've, we've got our layer. The, the trick to this is, so if I go up here to the, uh, to the layer menu, and I go down here to matting, which is gonna what we're gonna use, and it's it's possible you may have never even seen this before. It doesn't get talked about a lot. There's a little setting in here called defringe. If I try to defringe the layer itself, that's not gonna work, right? Because the layer doesn't have any edges to it. It's just it's just this. You know, we we see we only see the girl in the layer, but it's got the the whole white background to it. So that's not gonna work. I can go over here to the layer mask. Now I can go down here to layer matting and see it's grayed out. It won't let me do anything there. So the only trick to this is we have to kind of make it a little bit destructive. And that to, to me, it's okay because a client's never going to come back to me and say, you know, you need to change your selection. That's, that, that would be my job. So you have to, I'm, I'm personally picky about what I make non-destructive and destructive. I don't try to keep it non-destructive if it's not worth it. And in this case, it's not. So what I do is I'm going to command or control click on the layer mask itself, All right? That's going to put a selection around our subject. From there, I'm going to go over to the actual layer. I'm going to have to click on the layer and then I'm going to press command or control J. That's going to take our subject off of that white background and pop them up onto its own layer. And I don't need that layer in the middle anymore. I'm going to actually turn it off for now. So now the only difference is, is there's just no layer mask attached to this, but I'm okay with that. I, I don't really feel the need that I'm going to have to go in and modify this. And um, so at this point, I can't go back to that white background, but I don't want to. So now we know that this selection was created and we know that it's got some white fringes along the, the side here. So what we can do is come up here to layer, go down there to matting, and now we can go to defringe. I'm going to tell you 90% of the time, one pixel works just fine. And watch what happens. Look at that. It's gone. 
<laughs> I don't I didn't have to go in with the layer mask and painstakingly go and paint it out. Um, I didn't have to use the smudge or the dodge and the burn tools or anything like that. In one click, it is gone. All right, I will undo, come back up here, layer, matting, defringe, sometimes two pixels if you find that it's a real thick fringe and that would really only be if your original selection was not created as well. But um, again, I'm telling 90, 95% of the time, one pixel works just fine. Click OK and it goes around the entire image and gets rid of that little fringe that we had there. Okay. So folks, there are a few ways for you to, uh, to get rid of some little fringes inside of your photos. I mentioned it before, but there's a reason why there's, there's many ways to do this. And that's because every photo is going to be a little bit different. So the best I can do is hopefully give you some things to try out and you can kind of keep them in that little bag of tricks so that when you do come up upon a situation, you'll have a few different methods to work with.